Okay, we're going to talk about installing a 1 kilowatt inverter in a 2010 Toyota Prius. What you're going to have when you're finished is this. It will look very nice. Um, all you do when you're going to use this thing is you remove the cover and pull out the cable. And then you can plug in your inverter. And once you've done that, you can plug in your rice cooker or whatever else you'd like. Um, I also have it set up so that I can plug in my house. Okay, what are you going to need to do this? Well, first of all, you need an inverter. I decided to get a sine wave inverter, a thousand watts. That's about as much as you can get um, for this battery. Um, it's The reason I got a sine wave output, they cost a little bit more, but they will give you a nice pure output. I got mine for $260, which included shipping from Northern Marine on eBay. Now you can get these things cheaper other places now. Um, so shop around a little bit. When you're working with 12 volts, one of the things is you want to keep the cables short. That is really, really important. Here's what you're gonna need for the cables for the 2010 Prius. I got mine from GenuineDeals.com. You're gonna need three sets of cables. Um, one is three and a half inches, and another is 15 inches, another is about 10 inches. All of the cables I got are four gauge welding cable. I got welding cable because welding cable is nice and flexible. You wanna shrink wrap all the ends. Total for the, all my cables was 6670. That included shipping by priority mail. Now, two of these are going to connect directly to the battery and there's an Anderson, Red Anderson connector at the end. And then the third cable is going to connect into that Anderson connector and connect directly to your inverter. When you're buying your cables, make sure that you get a dust cap uh, so that you can keep it insulated. You're going to also need to get a fuse holder and you're going to need some fuses. I decided to get 100 amp fuses. Now both of the uh, things, the amp fuses, and the fuse holder I got from Amazon. You can probably find it somewhere else. I decided to get the 100 amp fuses because the main um, terminal on the positive side of the battery is fused at 140 amps, and I wanted my fuse to blow before uh, blowing the car's fuse. Now you're gonna also need some nuts and bolts. Uh, the nuts on this are metric M6 size. Now there are different kinds of threads with metric. You want the standard thread. You're going to need one MX, uh, M640 bolt for the positive terminal. Don't get something longer. It's not going to fit under the cover. And you're going to get one M630 bolt for the negative terminal. Now if you get something a little longer on this one, that's fine. Mine is actually 35. And then you're going to need two 10 millimeter nuts. Make sure they fit onto the bolts and two lock washers. Now when you take the whole thing apart, make sure you save the nuts from the original battery clamps because you are going to use them again. Okay, so you're going to start off by hooking up your three and a half inch cable and your 15 inch cable, the positive ones, into the fuse holder with the 5 16 lugs connected to the fuse. Remove the right stoplight cover and the battery cover and this is what you're going to see. Now let me just say something about working with batteries before we go any further. Batteries have a lot of voltage on them, well actually not a lot of voltage, a lot of amperage on them and so unless you know what you're doing don't do this project because it can harm you. All right if you know what you're doing then proceed. So you want to drop your fuse and the cable parts down through that stoplight thing. The Anderson connector is too big to fit down there easily. So uh, drop it down there. And let's start with the negative post on the battery. The original negative terminal bolt is facing toward the back of the car. So the nut is on the back of this thing. Uh, when you take it apart, be very careful not to drop things down into the inside of the car. Um, there is a lock washer in the back of this thing, so don't drop that down in there as well. Now, I reversed the bolt so that it comes out the other way, so it's a lot easier to work on. Um, and with the longer bolt, I could put the negative side of my cable on with a lock washer and another nut to hold everything nice and snug. Okay, for the positive side, you're going to flip up the red cover, and then if you squeeze the tab 
and lift up the whole uh, red cover. It comes off very nicely. And this is what you're going to see. Now, in order to remove the bolt, you need to pry on this plastic cover a little bit uh, just so that you can get the bolt free because the plastic cover sort of holds it on the back. And then you're going to put your positive um, cable onto there again with the lock washer and a new nut. Okay, let's see what this thing looks like once you've got it finished. Okay, so it's very nice. You just have that Anderson connector hiding in the little space there for your stoplight port. Uh, make sure that when you do this, you leave the loop so that you can grab it. You're going to need to cut a little notch in the positive cover, uh, red cover, so that that cable will fit out. And this is how I did it right there. Okay, let me show you the setup for this. Uh, first of all, you just pop open this. I keep the inverter here in the back. Just pull that out, set it down, and pop off the cover here. And inside I have the connector, which I then hook up very easily. And it's all set. And I have the grounding connected over here, just screwed it on to this post. Now I cut a little panel just to set this on so it uh, has a little more insulating. So once you've got it plugged in, make sure you have your car turned on. Then you can turn on the unit and it, it measures your voltage and it measures also your current draw. So right now I'm showing uh, no current draw and 14 and a half volts. Now, once you've got that set up, then you can hook up your device. Maybe it's a microwave. Make sure that it's got amperage that is consistent with uh, your converter, your inverter. Uh, this is a 600 watt microwave, although the whole thing is rated at over 900. So once you've got that set up, there you go. And your morning coffee or hot chocolate or whatever you like is hot and ready to enjoy.